Welcome to Wines and Wonders with Kirsten Fox. True stories with a side of wine. Looking for inspiration for your life and your wine glass? This is your podcast. Here's Kirsten. Hello and welcome back to Wines and Wonders. It is another episode. I'm always so happy to have Danielle with me. So Danielle Bryan's here from Shamanic Twist. Uh, welcome back. And today in the studio, yes. we have wine glasses. We do. It's been a day already. Yes. For real this time. Yeah. We're going to Tell- talk about wine yeah. and drink wine. We're going we're gonna <laughs> to drink wine. We're, we actually opened the bottle and decided to just start the day with some wine. So anyway, um, I am very happy that Danielle's here for so many reasons and we are focusing this season on time and all sorts of different aspects of time. If you've been with us, we've been talking about the time perception and how it seems to slow down in emergencies. We've talked about how, you know, can your past always dictate your future or Mm -hmm. can you, you know, change what your, the path you're on based on new information and things. Um, we, we've talked about Ho'oponopono, which is a Hawaiian, um, healing Mm -hmm. modality that will allow you to try to basically bring in healing to yourself and others that you may encounter, um, encounter or be focused on. And today we are going to a woo woo wacko place okay so you might need some wine too (laughs) even wacko for me and i live in wacko (laughs) that's good that is really setting so just saying listeners okay (laughs) bear with us take a deep breath and go maybe maybe maybe." and if and if you want just grab wine or anything you'd like to drink right now because it will help you um perhaps get your head around this (laughs) Uh, because it's very it's very bizarre in terms of time. So we're going to start with me telling you about this study that was done um, in it, it was done between 1990 and 1996. And I'll read I'll explain the study to you, and then and then we're going to start dishing on this. Uh, oh. Danielle's questioning my date. Ah, no, it, I see. It, yes, you know yeah. what? The the okay. Um, <laughs> just watch. Hey, <laughs> I'm just gonna start talking yeah. about it right now. All right, here we go. Get your wine. All right, a study by Libo Lib Libovici Libovici um, reported the results of an unusual study that was conducted in Israel. Okay, now. The sample comprised 3,300 or so patients who were diagnosed with a bloodstream infection Mm. between 1990 and 1996. Right. So that is when the infections took place. The patients. Okay. And a bloodstream infection was defined as a positive blood culture in the presence of sepsis. So there was an infection in someone's blood, right? Right. All right. Then they took these patients, these three, it's actually 3,400 or so, okay, 3,400 people, and they randomized them into a prayer group and a control group, okay? And now this is, by the way, 2000. So we're looking backwards. Right. At least four years. Yeah, we're minimum backwards. four years. Maximum, maximum 10. 10. Okay. So what they did is the studiers took a list of first names of the patients in the prayer group. Now we just randomized them into prayer and control. And they gave the first names to a person who did a short prayer for the well-being of that specific person and the full recovery of the whole group in the study. Right. Okay. And this basically was trying to study whether prayer has a retrospective Mm -hmm. healing effect. Right. Retroactive. Okay. Now, um, and the prayer, the prayer group was, 
somewhere in the neighborhood of 1,691 people, the control group was 1,702 people. So they are almost exactly equal in terms of numbers. Um, now, they also made sure that the prayer group, excuse me, the prayer, the people in the prayer group and the control groups were similar on like socioeconomic and clinical variables. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not mm -hmm. taking a whole different echelon of, of a society and mm -hmm. comparing them. And the mortality rate they found, now this is on the back end, looking backwards, remember, right. retrospectively, the, the death toll from each different group was not, success, not significantly different, okay? At the end of this, it was about the same with the prayer group mm -hmm. and the control group. So it did not affect... The prayers did not affect the prayer group in regards to whether they died or not, mm -hmm. okay? But <laughs> the length of stay in the hospital and the duration of the fever associated with the blood infection were both significantly shorter in the prayer group than in the control, the control group. Right. Okay. Now, also, isn't it that they randomly select the people? Right. So they just go one for you, one for you, one for you, one for you, right? So we got right. 1,600 and 1,700. Now, I believe that nobody knew what condition they had. Doctors and nurses were not aware that this study was even happening. It was completely random and, and really just about the study group, if you will. And they did not have any of those results you just talked about um, prior to doing the prayer. You are, at, you're correct. Yeah. This is all, it was all like triple blind yes. study. Right. Triple blind study. Three blind mice. Yes. <laughs> We're doing a triple blind study. So what, I'm sorry, but I am trying to get my head. Can you, in your shamanic words, yes. tell me what you understood just happened? Because it's it just flipped me on my head. If they're trying to, if they're retrospectively, retroactively praying for a group of people who had already been in the hospital, mm -hmm. who had already possibly died, right. who already had been discharged. Right. And they took this random group of people and the prayer group that the people that were prayed for actually ended up being the ones that had been uh, released from the hospital sooner. They had had lower fevers or shorter fevers mm -hmm. associated with these infections. I, I'm just, it's like, I... You tell me what you think happened, because I think we need another person giving <laughs> what happened here. Like, what is actual study studying? Right. Okay, Kirsten. So we talked about this a little bit before we even came on, right? And we knew coming into this podcast, we were like, okay, here we go. <laughs> this is the wacko <laughs> This stuff. is the wacko. All right. So we need a little bit of setup on this. And... There is, for those who have listened to us consistently, we have talked about what I do, right? So what I do, I'm a practitioner of shamanic energy medicine. And that means that I actually have the skill set and the ability through my training, through innate gifts that we all have, mine have just been honed, to navigate time in different ways and to navigate different realms of perception is what I would say. So in the shamanic field, we learn to journey on behalf of our client when I'm doing healing work with them. Sometimes the originating wound that a person has is a soul level imprint or memory from a past life. Now, past lives is not a brand new concept. We know about this. And actually, for those 
people who are going to listen to this podcast and go, what in the heck? Here's a resource for you to go find more information on kind of what we're talking about. Dolores Cannon is a high profile hypnotherapist who created and studied quantum hypnotherapy. And in her patients, what she began to see is that they would, she would, you know, do the hypnotherapy, but then recognize that we can, we can absolutely affect healing in our current present lives by bringing healing to the past life. Okay. So if you're going to want a whole bunch of like, whoa, whoa, what study on it, check her out. Now, What I know to be true, and I don't have a big fat giant YouTube channel where I can say, go look at all my studies and resources. But what I can tell you is that 15 years of doing client work and knowing that I work with people who have imprints or patterns or what I'm going to call wounding in this lifetime that have been carried over from past lives that in a healing session, when I'm working with a client, I will actually shift out of linear time and be able to do healing on the incident or the wounding of the past life that carries forward the healing into the current life and watch the healing in the client take place. Okay. So, and and I have an example of this. Please do tell. Okay. (laughs) I'll sit here and sip my wine while you (laughs) tell me about it. So one example, I worked with a young boy who had been experiencing all kinds of stomach difficulty. And it wasn't anything that doctors could say, oh, this is exactly what it is. So do this and it will heal. And, you know, they had taken that route and nothing was making it better. And he would have these stomach aches and they would go on and on and diet changes happened and all different kinds of um, probiotics happened and acupuncture happened, you know, so they explored these routes with him. Now, I had worked with him in the past for other things. And his mom called and said, you know, will you please work with my son? And this is what's going on. So I do this session and... What I see as I'm reading the energy and I'm, we call it tracking energy, which is to try to track the energy back to its originating source. So I see, I see energy as imagery. It will show up like a movie screen for me. Everybody can interpret and read energy in different ways. So I am taken back to a past life where he was a soldier in World War I. And he was wounded in the intestines. And the he didn't die from it, but he got a horrible infection intestinally from the wound in war. And, and he did subsequently end up dying from the infection. He didn't end up dying from the actual wound. So I, I sense that there's an imprint in his current life from this wounding that happened before. Now you have to remember that we're talking about this from a multi-dimensional perspective now. And we are multi-dimensional beings, physical body, mental, emotional, subtle energy body, soul body, energetic matrix. Now what I'm talking about here is that I am sensing the original wounding at a soul level imprint. Okay, in this current lifetime, his physical body had not been wounded in the intestines. But as he comes into this lifetime, and he's born into this lifetime, his soul body that has experienced many different experiences in lifetimes is still actually downloaded, if you will, with the program of this wound. Okay, so to put it into computer terms. Yeah, I appreciate okay. that. Yeah. So we, if we download a program onto our computer mm-hmm. and then, you know, we're done with that computer and we wipe everything out, but we don't actually remove that program and we give our computer to somebody else and it's a clean slate. Oh. All the pictures are gone. All the music's gone. Yes. It's restored back to factory 
settings. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But the program had been downloaded, then that person's going to get your computer with nothing on it, essentially a clean slate, but it's still going to have this program. Mm. So that is a way that we can look at what happens when we come into this lifetime and we carry over an imprint or a programming, if you will, from a previous existence, it will be held in our energy body. And if it gets activated, just like a minimized icon on your <laughs> screen, you come along, you double click it with your mouse. And what happens? It opens up. It is now active. Right? So we can hold these imprints in our energy field until something comes along and double clicks the icon, and then it will activate the program. Now, he had something happen that activated this program, if you will, that was held at a soul level. Remember, not a physical level, but it began to manifest in his physical body. So when I went back and did the healing, on the past life, what subsequently ended up happening is we healed the program that was held holographically in his energy body. Uh -huh. Okay. And then in his current lifetime, as this young boy, the condition went away. Hmm. So back to our wacko prayer. Not that that wasn't wacko enough. Okay. So back wow. to our prayer study. I'm going to ask you quickly. Yeah. I have to ask you about okay. this just a second. <laughs> how long did it take for him to say it's gone or how long was it like, did he walk out of your place saying my stomach pain's gone or did he say, did, your, did his mom call you two days later and go, I don't understand what you did or, or. Yeah. I talked to his mom, um, a day or two later and she said that he was feeling better. And since then he's not come back in with stomach issues. Now, okay, to even add further, that oh. actually relates back to this study, is that this is a family who lives in another state. They live on the East Coast. So all this work that I'm doing with him, I'm doing remotely. Oh, my gosh. What? Yeah. Oh, Danielle. My <laughs> son. Where, I need another glass before I... What? You're telling me you're not even physically with him Correct. when you're doing this yes. soul work? Yeah. Yeah, because, because energy exists outside of time and space, outside of linear time. We can, okay, here's a great example, and this will lead into the prayer study as well. So this whole prayer study took place outside of linear time. A couple shows ago, you and I talked a lot about linear time. Remember, time that flies like an arrow. It was, does your past dictate your future, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So linear time, time that flies like an arrow says, whatever happened to you in the past dictates where you are in your present situation, which then dictates what your probable future is, right? Yeah. Time Perfect. that flies yeah. like an arrow. Right. Now we talked about how we actually can begin to shift out of that. We can begin to recognize that we can use linear time as a tool, but it is actually not the end all be all truth of how time works. And there are plenty of studies that talk about this. Quantum physics talks about this. Quantum physics talks about the past, the present, and the future are all simultaneously happening. And it's about where our perception of our reality is. And we will lock into that and it will become our reality. And we operate that way. And it works. It serves us yeah. until it doesn't. Uh -huh, right? Uh -huh. So... The working with somebody remotely, I can still access their energetic body because it is accessible outside of physical time and space. Uh, okay. 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 So that's if how that If works. you accept... Yeah. If you, yeah. <laughs> you accept that... Time and, I mean, it can all be happening all at once mm -hmm. and everything is, it's not like we think that I'm in Utah and there's someone in Alabama mm -hmm. and I'm not going to, I can't access them. Right. You're saying that if you accept that, this, that you could actually physic or you could actually energetically, energetically yes. be um, with this 
young man Mm -hmm. and help him and do this cleansing work, even though you were physically not near him. Yes, because I actually will call in his essence into my office and work with his energetic body. And I have a lot of remote clients. That's a big part of my practice, actually, is clients who live out of state. Now, here's an example of how this works. Do you ever have that thing happen where you begin to intensely think about somebody like a friend just pops into your head yes. and you're, you're just thinking about them and thinking about them. And you're like, God, this is just overwhelming how much I'm thinking about this person. And then like 10, 15 minutes later, they call you. Yeah, that is right. Yes. I've okay. had that happen. That's what we're talking about. Okay. So what is happening in that situation is you are feeling or sensing that they are connecting with you. They're connected. It's just accidental in my case. Yeah. In your case, it's, it's purposeful. It's intentional, right? It's purposeful. But this happens accidental all the time. Oh, right. It's always like, I, what? Right. I just was thinking about you. Yeah. What? Yes. My mom and I call it bat signal received. <laughs> Right? It's I like, like that. got it. Okay. Because <laughs> more times than not, one of us will call each other and it's like, I can't believe it. I was just thinking about yeah. you. And it's like, I know. Now it's an I know. <laughs> got it. I got the signal. So that's, that's what that's what we're talking about from an everyday standpoint. Okay. That place where all of a sudden you're thinking about somebody super intensely, bam, they call. Yeah. And because it doesn't matter that they live in another state. You still are, what is happening in that moment is you are feeling them. You are connected with their essence, with their energy, and it's palpable. And it's what actually begins to propel the action. Wow. Yeah. So okay. now this is, this is an example of how can we be connected outside of linear time yes. without being in the same space, right? So right. Now we know these people. You knew you were going to be hooking up with yeah. this guy's energetic yeah. feel. Yeah. I know, well, no, my friend would call. I know her. Yeah. Um, the, you know, the study that we were talking yes. about, these are strangers. They're strangers. It, now, yeah. this is the setup to bring us to this. Because this okay. takes it it's one really step further. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So what is happening in this study, which is so fascinating. I actually teach about this in one of my Oh, courses. you do? I do. Oh. And this is the story and the example I use. Oh. So we talk, we are talking about outside of time and space. We're talking about circular time, sacred time, shaman time timelessness it can be basketball time basketball time yeah Yeah, that was my family is it a basketball minute (laughs) oh okay I've got 15 then right yes right yes um so from this setup that this is not linear this is operating outside of linear time okay okay back to the study back to the study okay not linear operating outside of time and space outside of linear time This study is showing that you can actually retrospectively bring benefit with prayer because the past and the present and the future, but we're not talking so much about the future. Well, kind of, we're talking about the future. The past, the present, the future are all simultaneously available at any given time. So what is happening in this prayer? Just like with the little boy who I went and did the healing work on the past life Mm -hmm. that created healing in the current life. This is that Mm -hmm. same concept. So what they're doing is they're saying they're getting a name, Kirsten, and they're saying their prayer. Which was a simple prayer about... I pray for Kirsten's well-being in full recovery of the group as a whole. That's what they say. Now, whoever is assigned this task is reading the name and giving a heartfelt prayer. It's energetic. They're feeling it. Mm -hmm. They're really praying. This is a prayer study, right? Mm -hmm. So they're praying. They're saying, may Kirsten have, have a full recovery and the group as well. And I'm praying for her well-being. May she have excess well-being. 
for herself and the group as a whole. Okay. Exactly however they said it. Mm-hmm. And they go through their list and they say this prayer. Now, what the prayer, what the study suggests is this. In that moment that they're saying their prayer and they are operating, which they don't know, by the way, that's the twist to this whole thing. But anyway, they're saying this prayer for this person. It is retroactive. They are actually the prayer because it does not stay within our concept of linear time is actually having an effect on that person retroactively. So for the time that they were experiencing the illness, even though the prayer is said four, five, six, seven years later, it is actually hitting its mark and it is having its positive effect even though our calendar says the event was four, five, six, seven years ago. All right. Um, Okay. (laughs) I am, I mean, come on. Okay. But you've got three, almost 4,000 people. Yeah. They've had these blood infections. Yeah. Well, 1,600 are in the prayer group. 1,600, yeah. Yeah. Oh, sorry, 3,400. I got the four mixed up. So 1,600, 1,700 in the player group, 1,700 in the control group. Yeah. But this is the control. I just got the folders. Yeah, with the first name only. Of the prayer people. And I've got the folders of the prayer people's first name. And then there's a control group over there that I'm not worried about. And and what you are saying. (laughs) Now, it's either it's between four and 10 years ago. Yeah. So I'm trying to think of like, okay, if Kirsten was in the hospital, say seven years ago, and I had a blood infection, and my time was this long, and I had fever for this many days, it's a fact, Jack, like, Mm -hmm. that's a fact. Seven years ago, that happened. And then someone picks up my folder and they've got Kirsten on the front and they say, you know, may Kirsten heal in a beautiful way and the whole group have great outcomes. And that, and, and then what does that, does my file change or is the fact that I got out, let's just say it took me 35 days to get out of the hospital. Mm -hmm. I mean, did it go to 33 miraculously or was 35 a better Um, healing process than most people who might take 45 days. Right. It's hard to answer these questions. This is why this is (laughs) a wacko show, okay? But here I'm going to throw in a whole nother level to this. Oh my gosh. Thank God there's wine. Yes. (laughs) Okay. Here's Here's another suggestion. So here's something. First, I'm going to say right out the gate, Kirsten. We are trying to analytically and logically and (laughs) linearly understand something that does not fit into analytical, logical, linear fashion. It is. It's it's completely wacko. We kind of have to throw that whole thing out the window if we're even going to start Ah. to wrap our head around this, right? So for all of you who are trying to understand this in a very analytical, logical, linear fashion, stop because you won't. It's not going to add up. And this is what I tell my clients at when I work with new clients, the one of the things I always say to a new client before they hop on my treatment table is energetics is not one plus one equals two. And we have to start there. Okay. Energetics so is hard not to understand. one plus one equals okay. two. Okay. Now, here's the twist, as if we haven't already had them. Past, present, future, all happening simultaneously. Future, okay? Future happening at the same time that our present is happening, at the same time that the past has happened. Who's to say that in 1996, when that person was in the hospital with the sepsis, having their 33 days in the hospital in their shorter fever duration, Mm-hmm. that what was already happening because the future happens at the same time as the past, that there was somebody praying for them. Oh, already. 
1996. <sighs> and therefore, they were having a higher recovery mm. rate because in it happens that moment at the same because it time. happens at the same time. So to the mm. year 2000, and this person sitting in their study praying was the effects Right. Were happening in 1996 because the person in 2000 is actually happening simultaneously. So the effects are actually taking place in 1996 because the future is already happening in 1996. And so then when we fast forward in our linear calendar catches up and now it's the year 2000 and somebody sitting in their office praying that had already taken Happened. place, which is why there's actually a benefit to the person from 1996. No, you do not have a chart that says Kirsten spent 35 days in the hospital, blah, 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 blah. And then 2000 <laughs> happens. And then all of a sudden the it's number like changes. Oh, 32. Right. Oh, she just lost two right. days. Okay. So okay. it doesn't happen no. like that. That's no. linear. Yeah, this this is uh, wild, mind bending time stuff. But you know what, Kirsten Fox, what Danielle Bryan, they make movies about this. Yes, they do. <laughs> and why do they make movies about this? Because it's so freaking cool, right? And it's not just made up fantasy Hollywood stuff. It's real. It's, it's real. the phone call coming from the friend when you've been thinking about yes. her for a few yeah. minutes or, or so. Yes. This is why this stuff yes. still this many years later, 20 years later, I still have those moments in my practice and in my teaching where I have that moment where I go, I can't believe this stuff works like this. <laughs> and it Amazing. still will stun me in that way. What's your thought as to how we can, is there a way to, to use this? Is there a way to, um, you know, I mean, this is interesting, a crazy study. You went back and cured this or, you know, you helped went back bring and helped healing. bring yeah. healing to this boy. Mm -hmm. um, how, how can we as normal people, non-shamans, mm -hmm. how can we use a tool? Cool like this if if we get our head around it if we believe it <laughs> right, which yeah. is still a half glass away for me <laughs> right. um what tell me what how we can use this mm. how do you advise your students now this is a tricky one because in the past you know last episode we talked about ho'oponopono like there was five steps i could tell you to do we right we talked about right. in other shows where you're like all right danielle how am i going to do this <laughs> get it like, to like down this. this is how you're going to do it right i want the one two three yeah. to do list so i, I can... can usually provide this one oh. is much harder for oh, me okay. to say to you just do this because it's so out there it is it's so out there what i would say one other really quick story that kind of highlights it, but is still an out there story. Like you have to decide if you're going to believe me or not. Okay. <laughs> is, well, because you're you, I'll believe okay. you and you're sitting here and I love you. But. Right. Um, so there's a process that we do in one of the classes that I teach where we are bringing healing to our karma to remember, I told you the story that we all come into this lifetime clean slate, except that we'll come in with imprints or programs that we're carrying over from a past life. And we do this journey where we will go back into that past life. So we do like a regression journey to go visit a past life where we need to bring healing to that lifetime into that person who was us at one time. Okay. Cause we're not that person in the past life. In a past life, let's say that we lived in the 1700s and we were farmers in England. Okay? okay. That's not who you and I are right now. No. Right. So that's not our lifetime. But if we're carrying an imprint or a soul memory from that lifetime, then it could be playing out and affecting us in this lifetime. And so this is where the healing goes. So in this class, we do a regression journey into that lifetime where we bring healing to that person that was us. And we also will fast forward to the end of that person's life 
and we will assist them in their death to release any density, any forgiveness that needs to happen. We become the angels that usher them over to the other side. Okay. So is this because they got stuck somehow? It's because they died with baggage. Let's okay. Say. okay. Okay. That's a right. kind of easy way to sum yeah. it up. Okay. okay. Um, so you, I know, because I know you, have read plenty of books on, you know, near-death experiences or people who assist people who cr are crossing over, et cetera, et cetera. Now, we all know if we've had the privilege of assisting someone in their transition, in their death process, that a lot of people will see angels come oh, or they'll yeah, see guys. Absolutely. They see, you know, the light beings coming. Uh -huh. Now, who's to say, I'm posing a question. I'm okay. not giving a fact. Okay. okay. Who's to say that when we do those past life regressions and we actually, because in the shamanic work, we learn to actually traverse timelines and travel into different realms. When we travel into this past life and we show up as light beings to assist this one to cross over, if that, let's just suggest that that person who was us, that woman who was a farmer in England in the 1700s is now crossing over and she sees an angel coming and this angel shows up and says, my dear one, all is forgiven. All is okay. You're going to a beautiful place. All is well. And she crosses over. Who's to say that that's not you from 2020? journeying back in time to assist her to cross over. We're bending time in a huge, wow. huge, huge way. So what we're suggesting is that in our present future, because 2020 is the future for the lady in right. 1700, right. that from the future we're traveling back and assisting her in her process yeah. as yeah. the angel who's assisting her and bringing healing so that as she crosses wow. over and dies, it effectively changes the person in 2020 the person as well. In 2020 as well. So this is Which what is yourself, this, like yes, possibly. It <laughs> is yourself. Heck? Yes. Oh, oh my I know, gosh. I know. So but these are these are the things that we we begin to understand about ourselves and our capability when we begin to understand ourselves as energetic, multidimensional beings who exist infinitely outside of linear time. So this prayer is suggesting that the future was happening already in 1996 mm -hmm. and bringing effective healing to the group that were randomly selected. And it effectively brought healing. And by the time our calendar caught up, we could see the results. Gosh. I know it's wild. So oh, there well, you you've have been talking. It. I know that you haven't been. I've been over here drinking. You, you're, you have, <laughs> I golly. can't drink and talk about this. Actually, it doesn't work. It's no. hard. You got to yeah, keep, <laughs> keep focused. All right. Well, you guys stay tuned. I, I have a wine paired to this. I'm not sure it's going to make the mark today um, because truly this is just, um, this is truly mind blowing. But I do have a, a case of different identity mm. that, uh, that was in the wine world. So stay tuned. We will be right back and I'll give you that wine to try and bring home and do some wine pairings with. Hold on. We'll be right back. Thank you for tuning in to Wines and Wonders with Kirsten Fox. True stories with a side of wine. Do you have a friend who is going through a challenging time in her life? And are you looking for a way to show your support that's more than just a phone call? Uplift Gift is a company that provides beautifully wrapped gift items inside a gift box along with your handwritten message of love in a card sent directly to your friend. It's quick and it's easy and something will be there very soon to support her at her time of need. Uplift gift when words aren't enough. Thanks for staying tuned to Wines and Wonders. 
Now, what wine will Kirsten choose for your table tonight? Here she is. All right. Thank you for sticking with us here during day drinking and um, <laughs> mind bending. Mind bending. Yes. yes yeah. This is oof. Um, this so is a big one. <laughs> this is a big one, and you know it's also um, something. And I I will tell you a story before I go into the wine quickly. I've done some work with Danielle, as you can tell, I'm sure, and I was in one of her programs that's called the Medicine Wheel, and we did a. I'll never forget it. We did a um, an exercise where we were to go back and look at previous lives. Mm-hmm. Um, and I thought, and by the way, when Danielle says something like that to me, I'm like, this is really hard for me to get my head around, but okay, I'll try it, right? I'm just not, I don't work in that world, or I haven't um, worked in that world a lot. So we are in this process and and she's taking us back on a possible timeline um and we're going backwards and um excuse me we're going forwards aren't we we're going forwards oh yeah we are we yeah, are, yeah we it was going forward we were going in time. forward we are in tracking time. destiny lines tracking possible des- futures okay possible yeah. futures now this was i guess maybe 5 or 4 or 5 years ago and, and I, I mean, she took us through, I don't know, three of them and they were very interesting, but <laughs> okay. One of them, um, I think you remember this because you decided. <laughs> this is my favorite story to tell. Oh class. dear goodness. <laughs> um, so I, I was saying in one of these stories, one of these destinies, um, that I was very old and I was speaking from the stage of a, vi- and, and everyone in the audience was very old. I had a feather boa on, um, and I, w- and they were in, they loved, everyone was just like loving me and clapping. And I was having so much fun speaking as an older person to all these older people. Okay. Now fast forward. And what happens is my mom comes and lives with me passes away. Um, and, and I went through this death experience with her and I did not know that was going to happen by any means. And, um, I end up in a place right now where I'm reinvestigating my life as I'm not sure how much time you have during COVID, but most of us have a lot of extra time and I'm considering what I'm doing. And one of the things that I'm considering moving forward with is, investigating and talking about end of life planning for both the elderly person and the family of the elderly elderly person and this whole feather boa from stage is coming like mm-hmm. to front center for mm-hmm. me and I just kind of laugh about it so yeah. I think about that often, yeah. but that's not the wine we're pairing with. And nor are we drinking the wine we're pairing with today. <laughs> this just happens to be open wines I've had at my house from something else I was doing for wine events. Um, I am going to talk to you today about a Merlot. Hmm. Um, a Merlot that... Um, now, South America's wine history is very interesting mostly because it comes from across the sea, across the Atlantic, from Europe. So um, in the mid-1800s, late 1700s, there started to be an emigration pattern of many Italians, French, Spanish. They came, they ended up emigrating, particularly in the mid-1800s, down to South America, okay? And when you emigrated you not only brought your grandmother's shawl (laughs) and your children's shoes and very important piece, you know, salt and pepper shaker that your family had handed down for generations. You also brought clippings of your vines Mm. from the, the vineyards on your property where you were emigrating from. And, as you tr- now remember, you're on a ship for mm, three months, so mm-hmm. you're not. 
I'm going to tell you that it wasn't probably, pro I don't know any specific stories, but I'm guessing if you had tried to water your vine and use <laughs> actual fresh water on one of those boats, you wouldn't have lasted very long on the boat, right? Right. So what they did, they kept the vines alive by cutting a little uh, path in a potato mm. and they would stick the vine in the potato. Yeah. It would pull out just enough moisture to keep its little self alive until you got to the destination you hoped it was it was alive and then you would plant it so a lot of the vines from in south america you look at the malbec in argentina mm -hmm. and then around in chile you look at merlot that was being grown there that came from europe and the merlot was growing there and it was um a very, I mean, Merlot is a very friendly, happy grape. And um, it's, I've heard it said, which I kind of agree with, and it's cavern, it's Merlot is Cabernet without the punishment. So basically, it doesn't have those high tannins, it doesn't take that long to age, it's just a softer, gentler version. Mm. Same kind of beautiful berry flavors and some of that leather and just really great stuff, but it's Merlot. Okay, so. We are, we've got Merlot planted in Chile, and if you talk about mistaken identities or mind-bending time, a, a gentleman whose name is, ooh, let me see what I'm going to find, a French botanist. I, I probably can't pronounce his <laughs> last name, so I wrote it down as a French botanist. Mm -hmm. um, in 1994, he's down there in Chile, and he happens to be in an area where some Merlot was growing, and he's like, this is really strange because some of the Merlot, it doesn't ripe. Like, it takes like four to five weeks longer than the other Merlot to, to ripen. He's like, I just don't understand what is going on here. So he started studying it. And it turns out it wasn't Merlot at all that mm. he was looking at. It was called Carmenere. Mm. And Carmenere was a variety of wine that was used in the Bordeaux region of France for hundreds of years to make Bordeaux blends. And it's very little used now. In fact, it's not even really cited as a Bordeaux blending wine. Mm. Um, great. But remember, all those immigrants are leaving in the late, late 1700s, mid 50, up to the mid 80s. 1800s, they're coming over with their vine clippings, which happened to be Carmenere, because that was part of what was being grown there. So Carmenere is a completely different grape than Merlot. Um, it does have the lighter tannins like a Merlot, but it's a little higher in acidity as, um, as a grape. And it has got the same kind of, you can imagine it's very close to Merlot because they thought it was this for mm -hmm. a lot of hundreds of years. But the, the wine itself will have those red and blue fruits and into the black fruits that a Merlot will have. But it's got also a little tinch more in the, what, we, what is called pyrazines. Pyrazines are a compound in wine that makes the wine smell like jalapenos or mm. green peppers kind of an herbal quality, mm -hmm. okay? With a spicy hint to it's it, It's got right? a... Like well, that pepper? Yeah, thing? the peppery. Yeah. It's like, it's not just a, um, a not piece of broccoli. Hot, just, broccoli. It's yeah. got... So pyr that's what's... Pyrazines are the aroma compounds that cause that. And they're seen in Cabernets. They're mm -hmm. seen in Merlots. They're seen... A ton Cab Francs, Cabernet Franc, um, Franc has a lot of them. And so does... The Carmenere. And so it is a wine that when you, okay, when you are putting a skewer on a grill mm -hmm. with beef chunks mm -hmm. and peppers, mm -hmm. you know, cut up peppers yeah. and the onions, yeah. oh my gosh, this Carmenere is going to go beautifully with it. And really right now, when I looked at the number of acres of Carmenere from in France, they have 70 acres planted in all of France mm. with Carmenere. Now in Chile, though, Chile, 
they have 21,000, almost 22,000 acres of Carmen Air. Hmm. And it's growing beautifully down there. And it is this kind of amazingly different wine to try mm -hmm. than the um, Merlot that it was supposed to be. Um, but it is in that family that has these amazing earthy kind of gr green peppery and um, pep and jalapeno-y kind of smells that come mm -hmm. out of it. And then these great berry flavors. So I'm pairing this specific bottle of Carmenere called Alka. And apparently my taste is a little over my budget these days because the last two <laughs> wines are bottles that I would I would have to hesitate before buying. This is $63 a bottle. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We're but, up in the game. <laughs> yeah. 100% Carmenere. It is Alka by Francois Lucton. So, How do you spell Alka? Is it A-L-A-L-K-A? -A -A. Thank okay. you for asking that. Alka. Um, and then the reason I chose this, and it's just so cute. It's from the Lolo Valley in Ch Ch um, sorry, in Colchagua Valley. And mm -hmm. but Lolo, when you spell it out, is L O L O. So mm -hmm. like it's just laughing out loud right. a couple times, right? <laughs> Lolo in the Colchagua Valley of Chile. So this is beautiful with, as I said, any of those meats on the grill with the peppers and the onions, but pork, lamb, beef, mm -hmm. it's going to go with everything. So that is my wine pairing of the day to go with the wine pairing in front of us. You have a rosé. I, I, no, I have a rosé. <laughs> I, I have a pinot. You have a pinot. <laughs> and uh, do you have anything left to say about all this craziness? Uh, all right, I have one last thing to say. So we're talking about past, present, future, all the business, et cetera, et cetera. Deja vu, right? We all oh, have heard about deja vu. Yes. Okay, so here's my running theory on deja vu, okay? Outside of time and space, past, present, future, all things happening simultaneously, we, most of us have probably had at least one experience in our life where it's like, whoa, deja vu. It's as if I've already done this, yes. but I never have. Yes. Right? Okay. Yes. Here's my theory. Okay. <laughs> okay. My theory is that because the future is ha already happening, has happened, is happening, whatever, deja vu is that moment on our linear timeline when that thing we've already lived because the future is simultaneously happening as our present, okay, it lines up our present and that experience oh. from the future click in and we're remembering something that we haven't done on a cognitive remembering like we haven't done that thing before we know we haven't from a analytical linear let me remember yesterday kind of timeline right but if we can wrap our heads around the fact that the future is already playing itself out you're already old in a boa talking to old people <laughs> then when wow. that moment happens, you will actually experience it as a, I've already done this. Because you have. Because it's in all the future. happening at the same, same time. time. <gasps> yes. All right. Clink on that, my friend. <laughs> Another mind-blowing experience. Thanks, guys. We are so happy to be able to talk to you. I can't even tell you. Danielle and I look forward to this. We do. Really. Yeah. And like to have you out there listening to us chat about this stuff is really fun. So thanks for joining us. And we'll see you next time on Wines and Wonders. We look forward to sharing a new story and wine with you next time. Thanks for tuning in to Wines and Wonders.